Hello, this is Andrew Cameron, and this is Andrew Cameron Sports. Today, we'll be talking about soccer. Soccer was originally found in China around 2,000 years ago, and it was called Su Chu, and they used the heads of the er, enemies as soccer balls. And as soccer advanced, they started using leather balls. Around that time, there were about 15 to 20 people on each team, and now it is 11. The first instance of modern soccer appearing was in 1863 at Freemason's Tavern, located in London. There, a man named Cobb Morley from England formed the first semi-professional soccer team in the history of the game. That name was Barnes Club. To help the word get out, Cobb published an article in a local newspaper regarding the rules and organization of soccer in the upcoming years. Only one year after the article was published, Founding members of different clubs joined Cobb Morley in creating the official rules for soccer. Cobb's ideas from rules and organization in soccer helped establish the very first soccer governing body in England, called Football Association, or FA. Being the first governing body in soccer, Football Association also wrote the official laws of the game back in 1863. With the years passing, history shows more and more countries forming their own soccer governing bodies based on England's football association. Soccer was slowly getting introduced to most countries, and each club and country has a different soccer history of its own. Every league in the world based their soccer rules on the original laws of the game. Laws of the game have helped bring soccer to where it is today becoming the most popular sport in the world with close to 150 years of soccer history and counting. The rules of soccer depends on uh, age groups and country, so I will be talking specifically about uh, teenage soccer in the United States. To start off with, each team has 11 players or less, depending on the amount of uh, players on each team. There's one goalie, and 10 people on the field. The field of play is set to be 100 yards by 130 yards with a half line and a 16-yard box on each of the goals. For the soccer ball, the circumference of the soccer ball must not be more than 28 inches and not less than 27. The ball, as used by ages 12 and above, may not weigh more than 16 ounces and not less than 14 ounces at the start of the match. Each player cannot wear any jewelry because it can harm other players, and they must always have shin guards and cleats that are accepted. In the middle of the field, there is normally a referee, and there are usually two side refs on each side to watch for offsides, which is one of the main rules that I will discuss later. The referee ensures that the ball and player's equipment meet the requirement, acts as a timekeeper, and stops play for infringement of the laws. Matches consist of two 45-minute halves with a halftime interval of no more than 15 minutes. A referee may play at a time because of substitutions, assessment of injuries, removal of injured players from the field, time-wasting, and other causes. An abandoned match is replayed unless the competition rules state otherwise. So the start of play is referred to as a kickoff, where the a uh, kickoff team has a chance to kick the ball where they want without the opposing team doing anything about it, whether that's passing it back or taking a shot. The ball being determined that it's in play is when it is inside the boundaries and out of play when it is outside the boundary. The outcome of a match is determined by the amount of goals. Goals are just whenever the ball crosses the goal line and after a goal is scored, it, you will restart play with a kickoff. The player is in an offside position if he is closer to the goal line than both the ball and the second-to-last defender, but only if he is in the opposition half of the field. The law states that if a player is in an offside position when the ball is played to him or touched by a teammate, he may not be actively involved in the play. I'm not going into all of the fouls and misconduct because that is a lot, so I will just skip that part. There are two different types of free kicks, called direct and indirect. For a direct free kick, you can score a goal off of it, just going straight into the net. But in an indirect free kick, 
another player, besides the one who initially kicks the ball, has to touch it before you go into a goal and count for a goal. The penalty kick is a foul that occurs in the goal box. This kick is 12 yards from the goal line, and it's a 1v1 on the goalie where you take a shot and the goalie has to react. Finally, I'll be talking about throw-ins, goal kicks, and corner kicks. Throw-ins are just if the ball goes out, the team that did not touch the ball last gets a chance to throw it in where both their arms have to go over their heads and both feet have to be on the ground when the throw is. A goal kick is inside the 8-yard box and your goalie can put it anywhere and any player on the team that the goalie is on can kick it out. And corner kicks, you take the ball at the corner and you kick it towards the goal and play just happens. Thank you for coming to my video. Please like and subscribe.